Monkey Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. Today, I'd like to talk to you about heavy metal. The movies, that is. Now, the original 1981 movie was a loosely connected anthology with an undeniable sci-fi and fantasy theme. The 2000 sequel was a more straightforward story, being that of heroine Julie, her sister, and the would-be god Tyler. Now, I've already reviewed the 1981 heavy metal movie, where I was ably assisted by my dear friend the Happy Viking. Go look up the back episode, it's in season one. Although, if we're talking about Happy Viking, I do wish he'd stop the random pillagings. It's getting embarrassing. Anyway, he won't be joining us today, this being a shorty and all, and I've decided to skip the blow by blow, being that there are a lot of blows and go straight to my opinion. This isn't a good film. While the anthology structure of heavy metal was uneven, its strength was that less engaging segments didn't last the whole runtime, and each segment's plot didn't need to be feature length. Heavy Metal 2000, however, is a feature length plot, and it suffers for it. With respect to the original graphic novel, the melting pot, the resulting movie bears little, if any, resemblance. And if anyone cares, with apologies to Miss Sirs Mercer, the plot, it goeth thusly. Dude finds glowy crystal, crystal drives anyone who touches it crazy, dude kills a bunch of folks on a random planet, unknowingly kidnaps heroine sister, sister goes on roaring rampage of revenge, final real twist which doesn't really impact the greater plot, happy ending. And the animation, again one of the original's great strengths, is one of 2000's great weaknesses. It looks so cheap! Of course, Heavy Metal was produced in the 1980s, a time when traditional animation ruled the roost, and CGI sequences of scant seconds could take weeks of computer time. Not so much at the turn of the millennium, when CGI and its counterpart digital compositing had been so artfully showcased in The Matrix. Perhaps, with a decade and a half of hindsight, the CGI of Heavy Metal 2000 might look primitive now, but the 2D sequences definitely didn't look feature quality even then, at least to my eyes. I don't mean to harp on Canadian-German animation, as Canada has a rich animation history, their National Film Board being a source of great experimentation and wit over the 1980s and 90s, but this is not an NFB-sponsored experiment, it's a commercial feature. And then, there's the utter forced gratuity of the violence and nudity. I suppose I'm showing my age here, and it is somewhat of a nitpick for such a testosterone drinking flick. Still, the violent nastiness just overwhelms me. Of course, this being heavy metal, you'd think that the soundtrack, featuring a raft of heavy metal bands, would be the saving grace. Sadly, this is the early 2000s, the era of new metal. And while one or two of the usual suspects do appear, in the form of Black Sabbath and Billy Idol, the soundtrack is still rather jarring to my ears. Technical considerations aside, there's still the unlikability of our protagonist, Julie, as voiced by model and actress Julie Strain. She makes the invincible Iron Man's take on Tony Stark look like RDJ himself. This of course points to a larger problem in harder rated movies, which we may return to in a future shorty. Although, most to all of the performances in this movie are weird. Even Michael Ironside's wild-eyed and shouty villain Tyler can only do so much. Not that the cast is that large overall, being that there are maybe half a dozen name characters in the entire movie, and the majority of dialogue goes to either Strain, or Ironside, or Billy Idol's Odin, who, spoiler alert, is actually the last Arrakation, and whose fate doesn't even really affect the outcome. And speaking of that plot twist, it's actually the only subtle thing in the movie. Occasional hints are dropped, points mentioned in passing, little asides, things like that. I'm actually quite impressed by it, as it's the only thing worth really paying attention for. Overall though, Heavy Metal 2000 just seems to have been done on the cheap, with none of the humour, charm, or likability of Heavy Metal 81. It's a nasty, brutish, and vile 84 minutes, and certainly not for my delicate sensibilities. 
there was a companion and sequel video game, Heavy Metal Fact 2, but I never really got that far in it. Not past level 1, anyway. And from my research, it seems that it ended on an unresolved cliffhanger. But if you'd like to check it out for yourself, if it isn't abandonware, then it's probably available on good old games. In closing then, if you're looking for a new favourite cult classic, Heavy Metal 2000 is not it. At least in my opinion. And with that, I've been Funky Monkey, and you've been watching another whole shorty. So long!